Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to be making an overpowered Rivers of Blood build. And this specific Rivers of Blood build I'm going to be making is optimized for PvE and specifically at the end of new game, which is when you'll get it normally. So, we are level 125 because that is around the level that you will get Rivers of Blood. You can of course be a little bit lower or a little bit higher level doesn't really matter as long as you have the core stats. We have 60 vigor because that is the vigor soft cap. No matter what your level is, you should have 60 vigor if you can get it. We have 13 endurance to not fat roll while using our loadout, as well as getting 51 poise for PVE. We have 9 strength, boosted to 13 since we're two handing the rivers of blood to save on stat points. We have 27 Dexterity, boosted to 32 with Millicent's Frost Thesis, and that provides us optimal scaling with the Rivers of Blood. We have 15 Faith for Flame Grant Me Strength, providing a 20% increased damage to our physical and fire damage. And we have 60 Arcane, that is the status soft cap and the physical damage soft cap for Arcane. That's going to provide us the most damage from the Rivers of Blood. For the weapons, we have Rivers of Blood, obviously, and we don't meet the strength requirement for it, so we are two-handing it. We have the Dagger, with Golden Vow as the Ash of War, because we cannot afford the 25 Faith to get the spell version, and the Ash of War is just slightly worse. Then we have the Dragon Communion Seal to cast Flame Grant Me Strength. You can also use some blood spells like Swarm of Flies or Blood Boon if you wanted to. Although I wouldn't recommend it, as Rivers of Blood is quite good on its own. For the Talismans, we have Shard of Alexander, Millicent's Tharsesis, Rottenwing's Sword Insignia, and Lord of Blood's Exaltation. If you are on new game and don't have Rottenwing's Sword Insignia, you can get the Winged Sword Insignia instead. It provides the same effect, however it's slightly worse. For the armor, we have the White Mask, Altered Fingerprint Armor, Battle Mage Gauntlets and Crucible Greaves, and that's going to give us 51 poise while being the lightest armor to equip. For the Crystal Tiers, we have the Flame Shrouding Crack Tier and the Thorny Crack Tier. Now that the stats are out of the way, let's break down this build. As you probably know, Rivers of Blood used to be quite good in both PvE and PvP. Due to this, it was nerfed repeatedly. They rebuffed it in PvE a little bit, and it now is only nerfed 12% from what it once was, which is still a significant nerf, however, it's not as bad as people claim to be. It is worse if you only hit with the tip of the weapon, however, since range isn't that important in PvE, you should always be hitting with the blade, so it's not that big of a deal. In PvP, it is nerfed quite a lot, however, it's still a solid weapon that can stun lock, and one of my next builds will be showcasing it in PvP. The main bread and butter of the Rivers of Blood is the at weapon art, which is Corpse Piler, and that has good range, good damage, and has good bleed buildup. It was very good before its nerf, and it is still quite competitive after its nerf. It doesn't have quite the DPS of something like Scavenger's Curve Sword, however, it is a single weapon that you can get in new game, and it doesn't require any special tactics other than pressing L2, so it's quite easy for people to pick up and play. With Flame Grant Me Strength and Flame Shrouding Crack Tier, along with the Thorny Crack Tier, Millicent's Prosthesis, Shard of Alexander, and Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, even without the bleed, you're doing quite a lot of damage per each use of the Ash of War. With the Lord of Blood's Exaltation and White Mask, you are doing even more damage, since if bleed is proc nearby. Since it does good damage on its own, and it has bleed, it can melt even the toughest bosses like Melania quite easily, even after its nerf. 